Yeah, South Africa has had a huge, huge background of organizing, you know, both against the colonial regime, against apartheid as well, and now in contemporary South Africa, against the government that we thought was ours, against corporations, against the rising tide of inequality in general. I do think it is important to problematize the notion of civil society. Um, for someone like myself, the idea of civil, right, it, it's an appeal to a colonial decorum, the idea of, um, you know, being respectable, where the burden of being civil is handed to you as a person fighting for something rather than the person who is doing the oppression, right? Um, so that's something that I think we need to just unpack a bit more to find our own meanings in it. I think the current political context um, is, is quite difficult. Um, the ANC, for all its flaws, has been the only formation in South Africa that has been able to hold within it different and competing interests in South Africa. So the fact that it is the centre is not holding within the ANC in many ways means the centre of our society as well is no longer holding. So a lot of what we see happening within the ANC is spilling out into broader society, right? We talk about the networks of patronage within the ANC a government. Likewise, in broader society, we see these networks of patronage at work, whether based across race lines, class lines, you know, they're always just manifesting. Um, we live in a time of where we have seen, you know, indiscriminate arbitrary force being used against protesters. And it's also a time of rising inequality and the backdrop, climate change, ruthless corporations that are just about profit maximizing. Our problems are not just with the state. Our problems are much bigger than the state, but it cannot be ignored how some of them have been facilitated by the very state itself. So yeah, it, it's been quite, it's a contested space for organizing, right? Because there are so many players at the game. So for the purpose of answering this question, I would define the civil society organizing as members of society with a common interest who are taking collective action towards that common interest, right? And I do think that there has been a lot of activity. I mean, there have been reports of South Africa as the protest capital of the world. We can see that people are continuously organizing and agitating for change. And this is the thing about inequality, right? A lot of people think it doesn't affect me, you know, because I live in a better house or I occupy a particular class or I am of a particular race. The reality is inequality breeds conflict and it doesn't matter who you are. It is going to impact you in one way or another. So, yes, there is a lot of activity. People are taking, taking part in actions that are going on. I mean, within our own organization, We've seen it go over 100,000 people who have taken issues across campaign issues. Um, we look at organizations such as Black Sash, who have been doing fundamentally important work around protecting social welfare in South Africa and the level of support that they have received. Um, and we see it within communities, whether we are talking about the university, where students have been supporting each other and are agitating change, but also outside of it, in our communities, you know, but within that there have been difficulties, right? Our society of inequalities is based on so many factors. So even within our organizing, there are economic differences, there are gender issues, there are racial issues which do come to the fore. And I think it's quite the first time that we are really grappling with what it means. I think it's important to acknowledge that um, the student protests are not new. They have been happening for many, many years, right? The difference between then and now is that previously white institutions have now come into the foray. And this again speaks to which organizing is seen as legitimate, right? 
when it's happening at historically black institutions, it can be ignored. But when it happens in certain spaces, so this again brings the question of who is taking place and where it's happening, you know, and it affirms the fact that these inequalities exist. But nevertheless, the student, the struggle of the student is a legitimate one. And it is one that has centered, that has fundamentally centered the question of decoloniality. It has centered issues of inequality. The idea, you know, exp we talk about worker exploitation, the fact that they work so closely with the workers. Um, and in some places, such as the Western Cape, they've been connecting with learners as well, high school learners. And it, it's fundamentally rooted in the idea that what is going on there is a microcosm of broader society, right? There has been a lot of discussion within South Africa about whether it is successful, it is a successful movement. They've had some major wins and major gains, you know, which I think should not be erased. But at the same time, a less visible one, but which is just as important, is that there's been a birth of a new language in South African organizing, where we are asking questions about the inequalities between us and how they impact on organizing, which I think is important to build on. Um, there were some, I remember during the protest, some of the commentary was around, oh, you know, so few black students make it into universities. Why are they protesting in universities instead of being grateful and not protesting about the poor education system? For me, such a line of thinking suggests that it is somebody's responsibility to protest, not your own. It's again this thing of you are handing over responsibility to somewhere else. Why are we not asking the question that they have started a movement like this? What can we as a society bring to the table? How are we connecting that movement with the different movements that are going on in the country?